Here is a really cheap Medion stereo system. I'd guess this is from the late 2000s, since it does still advertise the multimedia card MMC. It does have a, uh, a card slot up on top and a USB for a flash drive, but it'll probably only do MP3 and maybe uncompressed WAV simply because it doesn't advertise any other formats on here. It does have a particularly fancy CD player in there. Ooh, look at that. The CD player is broken, despite the fact that it was never used by the previous owners. When I got this stereo system, the protective thing was still inside the CD player. So, despite being new, it is broken. And then, of course, it came with a couple of speakers, one of which I have right here. And as you can see, this is, uh, well, full range, really cheap plastic bass reflex design. Nothing special. I want to tear this stereo system apart because with this being such a compact design there is really not a lot of space in there. So I wonder how did they design this? Is it a switch mode power supply which would save them from having to put in a big transformer? Is it a class D switch mode amplifier which would save them from having to put in a big heatsink? Or is it an all-traditional design with linear power supply and a class AB amplifier just uh, very cramped inside of there? I want to know, so let's open this up and find out. After removing a bunch of screws around the outside perimeter of the unit, the front folds down like this to reveal the components inside. So, what is what? The antenna input jack is tucked away down there. That's the auxiliary audio input jack. Up there is on a daughter board the USB jack and a card reader, which I've already detached from the main board. And this is the main board. The power supply sits right there. And there is also the speaker and... Uh, headphone output hidden in that uh, insulation. The panel on the front really only contains momentary push buttons, most of which, by the way, have contact problems, so you can't even use the radio in this thing anymore. This up here is the backlight for the display. The display has this uh, weird little interface board right there. The CD player sits down in there, obviously, and then right here is the fancy door opening mechanism. Not even that would have worked for much longer because this belt really doesn't have the kind of uh, tension that it should have. Let's take a tour of the main board. The display backlight power is right here. This right here connects to the motors of the CD player, so this IC is the driver IC for those motors. This right here is all for the fancy loading mechanism, which apparently they've all done with discrete transistors right there. This connector is for the front panel buttons and the display, and this IC is probably related to those. Around here is the antenna input. The tuner sits on this tiny little daughter board right there. And as you can see, all that really is is a crystal and an IC. That's all it takes to build a tuner, which is quite impressive. Uh, right here is the auxiliary input. This is the amplifier section, and we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Speaker output is right there. This is the power input. Looks like this runs on two different voltages. Um, right here is where the laser assembly of the CD player connects. 
And this I see, now I don't have internet in the workshop, so I can't look up these uh, component numbers. But this I see, either it's an all-in-one CD player, because that, uh, that obviously is where the laser assembly connects to, or this is a all-in-one chip that does the entire stereo system, basically a, uh, a microcontroller dedicated purpose. Um, it could be because the connectors to the card reader and USB jack are right there, and these do appear to connect to this chip as well. I'm not sure what this chip up here does. The main board is a double-sided circuit board, but all the components are on the top side, with the exception of these two. So this is a traditional class AB amplifier. It's a boombox style stereo amplifier chip right there. And then next to that is a 5 volt linear regulator, a 7805. So they had to put in this big heatsink and it's all the way in the bottom of the unit where there is the most space for this. Here is the power supply taken out. This right here is actually some uh, shielding, then some insulation, and surprise, surprise, this is a switch mode power supply. And not a bad one, it looks like. Looks pretty decent to me. Mains input is right there. And then voltage output, obviously, is over here. Interesting voltages. Uh, you can see them listed up there. We have 8 volts and 14 volts. So there is that. A switch mode power supply. And a filter choke right there. So that's pretty decent. So now that we've found out how this thing worked, I'm going to recover all useful components from this. Here are the little circuit boards of the door opening mechanism, and those contain the limit switches. These are just normal micro switches. So, more possible contact problems there. And this is all that remains in the end. We have the heatsink, which might be useful for something. We have some shielded cable. Wasn't able to salvage the antenna jack, because that had hot glue all over it. We have the two speakers, 4 ohm, 5 watts. Very cheap. I'll probably just pop them for entertainment at some point. Some ferrite cores, USB jack, some super bright blue LEDs, a red LED, the 7805 voltage regulator, this metal bar might be useful for something. This motor and gear assembly from the uh, loading door drive thing, that might be useful for something. These uh, dampening things from the CD player, they might be useful for something. Power switch and the power supply. 8 volts and 14 volts. I have inspected the other side of the board and it is a proper design with proper insulation between the primary and secondary, so that's all fine. Now you're probably asking where is the amplifier I see? You can certainly make something out of that and yes, I certainly could if it wasn't soldered into this double-sided board. It is soldered in on the uh, on this side as well as on this side and unfortunately that is pretty much impossible to desolder so this chip is well basically it's just going to be stuck in this board forever so it's not salvageable anyway so that's it thank you for watching